Hello, this short video is going to give a tip on how to save a lot of recompilation time if you're using VHDL. Let's take a very small example of a VHDL design and if I go down here in the hierarchy, so if you watch where my mouse is right now, this will get filled in with the full path to there. So you can see we're three levels down in the hierarchy and in a real design of course you might, you might be many many layers and a typical requirement is if I were to show the source code of this I wish to make a change to something okay so if I'm a debugging a simulation for example or trying to experiment with something I look at a statement like this this definition of something called nine if I hold my mouse over it then I can see it's from a package called alarm types in a library called worklib and its value is b in hex okay so we could also have you know without using that we could have looked at the code and if nine is not defined in this file then it must be in some use clause and here use work dot alarm types dot all so this package called alarm types is where i would find that definition of nine so if i suspect that definition is wrong or i wish to experiment i could click the right mouse button and say go to definition and it shows me the source code here where that definition was made which is inside this package called alarm types as we have already established and this doesn't look like the value 9 if we're treating this as unsigned text so I need to make a change to this so this is a very common requirement to want to do this however this gives me a problem I don't want especially if I was running a simulation that had hundreds or thousands of files this may take me tens of minutes and it's not convenient just to make such a small change and pay the penalty of many tens of minutes so how can I get around this now let's talk about first the cause of the problem the reason this is bad is because of the rules of VHDL compilation so there's two rules the first one is the primary must be compiled before the secondary now this is referring to design units so first we need to go back and discuss what does design units mean in VHDL there are only five design units and that's all there's primary design units these can exist by themselves and secondary design, design units which can only exist with the corresponding primary so for example an architecture cannot be defined by itself when you define an architecture the syntax reads architecture and then the name of the architecture of some entity so the entity needs to be described first indeed if we were to look at the contents of the library um, so in the cadence simulator there is a utility called ncls so this lists the compiled objects and if I just put minus all so obviously there's loads of switches I could have used, but minus all. This will list everything that's compiled. And we can see if we look down this list, all we'll find is entities, packages, package bodies, configurations, and architectures, and nothing else. That's all I will I'll see in there. So that's what's meant by design unit. For VHDL does not care about files. It cares about design units, and that's all. So by design units, I've got to compile um, an entity before an architecture and a package before its package body. And of course, this only applies if they're in separate files. Um, if I had them in the same file and the file has changed, then the tool can't tell what changed. Was it something in the package or something in the package body? So this leads us on to perhaps we can have a more flexible uh, approach and save ourselves a lot of compilation if we decide to put each design unit in its own file. And the downside of that, of course, is it gives you more files to manage. Rule two um, is that any design units cannot be referred to unless it's been compiled already so if I'm compiling an entity for example which is has a use clause saying use that alarm types package I needed to have compiled that alarm types package previously so as well as these rules which obviously apply during compilation they also apply for recompilation so I must recompile an architecture if I've recompiled an entity even if I didn't change it that's what the VHDL language reference manual says this is not a decision that an EDA company made when creating a simulator this is what the LRM specifies I must recompile a package body if a package is recompiled and so on what this leads us on to in this case is that if I want to make that change to the package that I've already seen I need to compile the package before the package body I need to recompile an entity that refers to that package which means I need to refer to its architecture and this goes on and on and on all the way down the hierarchy so in essence in my particular Particular design that I have making that single change in this package requires basically the recompilation of every other file here you know is there a smarter way to do that and that's what we're going to talk about now what I can do instead is I can decide to separate my package body and package what's called header into different files so this allows me to take advantage of those recompilation rules now if I say okay I'm going to take this definition which is in my package and I'm going to place it instead in this package body which was previously empty okay and I'm going to actually change it to what, what I intended to write and what I can do now is that's the definition of my constant which I can change whenever I like what I do here in the package is I say 
I have a constant with a certain name. I say what type it is, but I do not specify its value. So this is known as a deferred constant because I'm deferring the value that I give to that constant to the package body. You know, I might ask myself, why did I do that? So what I now have is, here's the deferred constant in the package, and the actual value is in the package body. So because they're in separate files, why this is a benefit to me is now that if I make that change to that file here, the only thing I need to recompile is the package body. I don't need to recompile the package, and if I don't need to recompile the package, it means I don't need to recompile entities that refer to it, which means I don't need to compile the architectures of those entities. So the only thing I need to recompile is that single file out of the hundreds or thousands of files I have. So in order to make these changes for experimentation or to fix bugs, definitions that are in a package just to make them reusable is better if you put their values actually in the package body. It will save a lot of recompilation time. So again, if we refer back to these compilation rules here, if we recompile the package body, we have compiled the primary before the secondary again. And the things that are referring to the package, we have made sure still that the package and the package body have been compiled before they've been referenced. So we've met all the compilation rules, and we only need to compile one single file. Thanks for listening, and I hope you found that useful. Mm -hmm.